Okay, so I'm going to talk about domain. And to do that, I'm going to start by explaining something without any numbers. Let's think about a zoo. So this is the whole zoo. And inside we have a couple different sections, right? All the animals are in their different sections. And we're trying to find the lions. Well, I know that the lions aren't going to be in the reptile section. And they're not going to be in the bird section. So I definitely can't say that lions are in the entire zoo. They have a smaller area. And that would be something like the safari, right? This section is the domain where I can find lions. So if I were to write that out, just like we would write this as a math problem, domain is the safari, just the safari. Think about the zoo as all of the potential numbers, every single real number in existence. And then the safari is just a subset of those numbers. It's just a section. And my domain is restricted to just the safari because lions can't be reptiles and they can't be birds. So they're not gonna be anywhere else in the zoo. And the only place I'm gonna find them is in the safari. So the scenario is that a person is going to the store with 25 cents to buy eggs. And eggs cost 10 cents each. So I have 25 cents, eggs equal 10 cents each. Okay, so there's only a couple things that could happen. I could buy zero eggs and spend zero cents. I could buy one egg, spend 10 cents, or I could buy two eggs and spend 20 cents. I can't possibly buy three eggs because I don't have 30 cents. So that's not a possibility here. And I can't buy half of an eggs to make it exactly 25 cents. That would have to be 2.5 eggs and what use is two and a half eggs. So my domain in this problem is restricted to just zero, one, or two eggs. Those are the only possible solutions here. I can't possibly buy any number of eggs between zero and one. That would be something like half of an egg or one fourth of an egg. Those are not possibilities. I can only come out of the store with zero eggs, one egg, or two eggs. So this is my domain. I am restricted to those three possibilities. Now, usually in most problems, our domain isn't restricted to just three numbers. It's usually restricted to something like domain is all real numbers. That would be any number. Or it'll be something like domain is all positive numbers. So let's look at a situation like this. Let's say I'm going to the store and I want to fill my basket with some items. So I'm going to the store and I want to buy some apples. I can only possibly buy a positive amount of apples. There's no possible way for me to go to the store and somehow lose apples and end up with negative apples. So my domain in this situation, assuming I have infinite money and I could spend billions of dollars on apples, my domain would be all positive integers. I could buy one apple, I could buy two apples, I could buy three, four, five, on and on and on, right? I can't buy half of an apple, I can't buy a fourth of an apple, but I restricted it to positive integers only, which means I'm only including whole numbers, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not including the irrational numbers or rational numbers, such as 1 half or 1 fourth of an apple. I'm just counting positive integers. For example one, they want me to graph the inequality x is greater than 2, and they are telling me that my domain is all real numbers. So they're restricting me a little bit. Let me draw my inequality and do it just like normal first. So I know that x is greater than two, so I'm gonna put my circle here, but I'm not gonna fill it in because it's not equal to two. And it's greater than. And they told me that it's gonna be all real numbers. So that means I can let this arrow cover all real numbers that are greater than two. Sometimes it'll be a little bit different and it won't be like normal. So let's try another one. So this time they want me to graph x is not greater than or equal to three. And my domain is just all my integers. So that's not all real numbers. I'm restricted to just integers. Now remember, integers are all of my whole numbers and my counting numbers, like zero, one, two, three, and all the opposites, like negative one, negative two, negative three. But that does not include any 
fractions or irrational numbers. So let me draw my inequality. I know that x is not greater than or equal to 3, so let me just think about what it actually is. x is less than 3. So since I know that x is less than 3, I'm not going to put a dot on 3, and I'll explain why in a second. I know it is every integer that's less than 3. So I'm just going to put a dot on every integer that's less than 3. And I did not fill in 3. So the reason I didn't have to put an open circle here is because that open circle is just there to say that there's a hole at 3 so that I could draw an arrow here and you would know that that arrow goes all the way up to 2.9999999. But in this case, the closest answer to this problem is 2. So I just have to put a dot on the 2. Okay, this time x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and my domain is all real numbers again. So I need to indicate every real number that's greater than or equal to negative 1. And I'm going to put a closed circle on the negative 1 and mark all the real numbers that are greater than or equal to that negative 1. So that would be all of these. I have to make sure I'm getting every single number in there. And I made it a solid circle at negative 1 to show that negative 1 is a member of that domain because I said that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So I have to include that negative 1. So in this case, x is less than negative 1, and my domain is all my positive integers. We have to know what those positive integers are. Remember, integers are just whole numbers, counting numbers, and their opposites. But they said only positive integers. So I'm only going to count the positive ones. And if I draw my inequality, and I start at negative 1, and I need to go less than negative 1, I kind of have a roadblock here. There are no positive integers that happen on the left side of negative 1. That would be negative 2, that would be negative 3. None of these are positive integers. All of my positive integers are over here. But my arrow wants me to go to the left. It wants me to mark anything less than negative 1. But it's not possible to have a number that's less than negative 1 that is also a positive integer. So my answer here would just be the null set or the empty set because there are no positive integers that are less than negative 1. Okay, let's try one that's not a trick question. Graph x is greater than or equal to negative 5 and the domain is all positive integers. So it's greater than or equal to negative 5, but all the positive integers that are greater than or equal to negative 5. So I'm going to start over here at my negative 5 and go this way and mark off every single positive integer. So that would start at 1, 2, 3, 4. And I could have made my inequality longer. I can make it as long as I want it to be. I would just have to make sure that I marked off all of those positive integers. doesn't matter how long you make it. Just make it long enough so that you can see a pattern and you can draw an arrow here to imply that it keeps going. Now the second part of this lesson talks about the additive property of inequality. And in order for us to understand the property of inequality, we're going to have to look back at the other additive property that we know. So the additive property of equality, which we already know, is that if a plus c equals b plus c, then c plus a equals c plus b. Okay, there were a lot of letters there. Let me write that out as numbers. If x plus 4 equals 8, then I'm able to solve for this problem by adding the same thing on both sides to keep it equal. So on my left side, I would add a negative 4 to get rid of that 4. And on this side, I would add a negative 4, or I would just subtract 4. And then my x would equal 4. So it's kind of a confusing way of writing it out like this, but it's really just saying that we can add something to two sides of the equation to keep the whole thing equal. And the same property works for inequalities as well, which we call the additive property of inequality. So notice all they did was switch out those equal signs and turn them into inequality signs. And it's still the same idea. And let me show you an example x plus 2 is less than 0. This is the same format as the other problem we did, but instead of an equal sign, 
I have an inequality, I have a less than sign. And I'm just gonna solve it the same way I did with the other one. I'm going to get rid of something over here or add a negative so that it's still the additive property. So I'm adding this negative two over here to get rid of it. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing to the other side of my inequality to keep it equal. So then I end up with x is less than negative two. But a lot of these are also going to give you the domain. So let me show you how it would be written in your book. So this is the same one I just solved for. x plus two is less than zero. And after getting rid of a two on both sides, I found out that x is less than negative two. And they tell me that my domain is all real numbers. So I can graph this just like I did in the other lesson. I find my negative two. I'm gonna have to do an open circle because it's not equal to. And just mark all of the numbers that are less than negative two. And I can mark all of them because it said all real numbers and every number is a real number. So it would just be like that. Let's try another one. So x minus three is greater than or equal to negative five. And my domain is all integers this time. So one more time, I'm gonna tell you what integers are until you can't possibly forget. It is all the whole numbers and the counting numbers, zero, one, two, three, on and on, plus their opposites, negative one, negative two, on and on. Okay, so to solve for this equation, first off, I'm going to have to do something to the left side and also do it to the right side to get that x alone. So on the left, I'm gonna add three to get rid of that three, and on the right, I'll also add three. So I end up with x is greater than or equal to negative five plus three, which is negative two. And now I'm going to graph it. So I have to start at my negative two and mark off all of the integers that are greater than or equal to negative two. Now this one doesn't just say positive integers. This is every integer. So I can mark the negative two, the negative one, the zero, one, two, and I'll draw an arrow this way to show that this pattern continues on that way. And I did have to fill in the negative two because it said greater than or equal to negative two. If you have not yet done the practice problems, pause the video. I'm going to go through those right now. Okay, so this one says x is not less than or equal to negative 2. And d the domain is all positive integers. So the first thing I do whenever I see a crossed out inequality is I'm going to write what that inequality actually means. So less than, it's not less than, it's not equal to, so it has to be greater than. So I'm going to write x is greater than negative 2. And now I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to start at the negative 2 and mark off all the positive integers that are greater than that negative 2. So I'm going to have to skip negative 1 and skip the 0 and only mark the positives. 1, 2, 3, and draw an arrow that way to show that it keeps going that way. 0 is not a positive number. It is neither positive nor negative, so you don't mark that. So for question B, x is not less than or equal to 4. The domain is all real numbers. So again, I'm going to have to figure out what x does equal. It's not less than, it's not equal to, so it has to be greater than 4. And I'll graph that here. So I'll start at 4 and only mark all the real numbers that are greater than 4. So I'm going to do an open circle, and it would go to the right and cover all of those real numbers. For this one, it says x minus 5 is not less than 0 and the domain is all the integers. So I have another crossed out inequality. If it's not less than, it has to be greater than or equal to. So I would rewrite that as x minus five is greater than or equal to zero, and I'm going to graph that. But before I can graph it, I have to actually solve for the x. So I'm gonna have to add five over here and add five over here to make that x is greater than or equal to five. So I need to make my graph a little bit bigger. And I'll start at five, mark off the five, and mark all the integers that are greater than or equal to five. So in this case, I only have a six on there, but I'll draw my arrow to show that it would be all of those positive integers greater than five. Okay, for the last one, x plus two is less than five. The domain is all integers. So I don't have a crossed out inequality this time, but I will have to solve for the x before I can graph it. So I'm going to get rid of 2 over here and then do the same thing on the other side. So I'm left with x is less than 3. So on my graph, I'll start at the 3 
and mark all the integers that are less than three. And that's all for that.